I am presenting to you on behalf of all the citizens of Danbury who are concerned about human dignity, the Connecticut chapter of the NAACP, the Episcopal Church, the black clergy of Danbury, and the Connecticut State Missionary Baptist Church Convention. We are in possession of several emails that are offensive, hateful, racist, and dehumanizing, and promote unfounded fear of populations in this diverse community of Danbury. The source of the emails is a leader of the Common Council with two other council members on the distribution list. These emails span several months and are targeted at the Hispanic, Muslim, and African communities. We are outraged, deeply concerned, offended, and insulted, and find these emails absolutely unacceptable from anyone. But when they come from the majority leader of the Common Council, Pauline Basso, an elected official, we find them particularly disturbing. We are not naive enough to believe that we have control over what is sent to us, but we are responsible for what we forward to others. We do not believe that the majority of the people of this city will tolerate this blatant disrespect. It is important that we hold our elected officials to a high, the highest standard of conduct. At minimum, we believe the Common Council would represent all the people of the city of Danbury and should acknowledge the harm these emails cause and the actions that they have uh, taken. Specifically, the, the council should reprimand Ms. Basso for her repeated divisive activity and demand a public apology from her. We also demand that Ms. Basso resign from her position of leadership on the Common Council. I pray that this disclosure today will advance the dignity of everyone in this community based on the fact that we are all created in the image of God. Finally, regardless of the outcome, I'm going to pray for Ms. Basso, and I hope that she will understand the real issues and the unacceptability of her actions. Thank you. Now we'll hear a brief comment from the president of the um, Baptist State Convention, uh, the Reverend Dr. Boise Kimber. Thank you. Let me thank everyone for gathering uh, here uh, today and showing a serious racial coalition here in Danbury. There is uh, no way that anyone who is representing public people should have an opportunity to serve the public with an attitude and disposition that has been shown thus far. As Pastor Pitts has stated, certainly uh, we demand her resignation. And not only, not only demanding her resignation, but the mayor of Danbury certainly should stand up and speak out for such words and language of this nature. And if, and if this mayor cannot stand up for the community in which he serves, then maybe, then maybe there needs to be words said to him, and maybe there might need to be some actions with him, and maybe others who serve this community will not stand up and speak on behalf of this community, then maybe something needs to be said in reference to them serving the public. And so again, let me thank this community for coming and standing up at a time such as this and in a world in which we live in where racism is on the rampage and we will not tolerate it here in Danbury nor any part of Connecticut. So again, thank you very much. If there are any questions, we'll answer it at this time. Ivan Pitts. That is correct. President of the local chapter of the Greater Danbury NAACP. Let me ask you a little bit about the timing of your press conference today. First of all, 
motivated with the upcoming election. What spurred you to really come out here today? Well, um, I got the email two weeks ago um, from an anonymous source, and that anonymous source has come forward uh, since then, and we tried to handle it uh, quietly behind the scenes. And when that was rebuffed, uh, we decided to call a press conference. I consulted with the state president of the NAACP. I consulted with the state president of the Baptist Church Convention, and this is the appropriate action based upon no action. I sat down with, with who I thought would be uh, the power players who can make something happen um, to try to um, really address this in a non-public way. And the response was a half-hearted uh, apology and uh, a way to try to pacify the situation until after the election. Um, people who are employed in this city. Okay. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Can I ask you, who you speak with the mayor? Uh, the mayor is aware of the emails we have talked. Um, he expressed at that time his discontent and his displeasure with the emails and that he thought they were tasteless. Um, but that's about all the action as it relates to uh, what I've seen. Yes, ma'am. Now, was referring to illegal immigrants, and we know that that's a topic that's not much here. Now, this actually has a lot of um, you know, impact in our community because of crisis. What's your position what in the way to regarding these, the residents here who are illegal immigrants? What's your position on that? Are you also coming together to defend that front of the end? Well, the immigration issue is a huge issue, and this is not about immigration. In my opinion, this is not a political piece. This is about the human dignity of all people, regardless of where you're from, what your religious background is. Uh, I don't know. Is there someone in the Latino community who wants to come forward and speak? Do you think it's bad to sort of the already charged atmosphere in the city? Well, I, I don't know how it wouldn't add, but again, um, I'm going to be uh, steadfast in my position that I think that if you get into the other side issues, then you really dilute the real issue. And the real issue is human dignity. And, and, and should that matter where you're from? And if the truth be told, uh, there are only one group of people who's from this country in the beginning. So everyone here, except for Native Americans and African Americans, are immigrants. And many of them didn't come with paperwork. <laughs> Oh, she needs to be off the council, period. Well, there are other people who were recipients of the emails who are on the Common Council. However, I have no proof that they forward these emails on anyone, so therefore I am not at liberty to share their names. Again, you can't control what comes to you, but you can control what you forward on to your friends. What, what is your impression of the often prevailing atmosphere in Danbury? Uh, there's a lot of immigration issues, there's a trade. Uh, how would you describe kind of the prevailing mood in Danbury in terms of policy? Well, I think that is a serious issue that we look at as a community and society, um, and that's really my answer. Uh, Reverend, I know you got an apology letter. Yes. Um, this woman uh, had been arrested for violating the law. Yes. No, I have not spoken with her personally. However, um, I have been contacted by many people 
um, from her constituency, um, some who have even to some degree said that it was impossible for her to have sent those emails, and that's amazing because I had an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that smart, but it just didn't add up. <laughs> yes. There was a hand-delivered letter addressed to me um, that was delivered to the church. So I don't know who delivered it. It just said on the envelope, hand-delivered, open. It was an apology. Yes. Several people were sent the emails uh, throughout the state of Connecticut. I was just one of the recipients. I have a question for Milton. Milton, are you here? Thank you. Well, I'm here as a citizen of Danbury. I'm, I'm insulted by those emails. I'm here as the brother of all these people. Thank you so much. Um, God bless you all. And I hope that this event will allow us to work together and be uh, tolerant and uh, sensitive to all the needs and all the positions of the people in this community. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, uh, David.